In the US, some sportsmen refuse to go to the White House. If Donald Trump would invite you to go to the sure. White House... No, no, it's fine. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. The police violence. What would you do? So he, he's pathetic. He's small. Uh, he's a whiner. We all know that. But you wouldn't have him babysit your kids. You wouldn't hire him. If you had a small business, you want that man in your business? There's no way. But you're going to vote for him for president? Because he's strong? I mean, Kamala Harris whipped his ass in the debate, just obviously. And he's running ever since. He doesn't want any part of her. Because as she said before, she's eaten many of his type for lunch as an attorney general, as a prosecutor. He's, he's a small fry compared to some of the people she's gone after. And he, he knows it. So all he can do is cut people down, you know, and do what he does. We've all seen all that kind of stuff. The ones that you can be even more angry about, because he's sick. He's a damaged man. He grew up the biggest wannabe there ever was in New York, right? We all know that. He wanted to be in the inner circle, but they laughed at him his whole life. Just like Obama made fun of him at that dinner, and he was about to melt. It angered him so bad, uh, it was scary. But he, he was never accepted. He was treated like a fool, like a clown. And now he's able to just give the finger to the world because of his position now. And that's what he's doing. He's getting back at everybody because he's so small, he's got to go after everybody, just like we all know the generals and Mike Pence and all that. We, we've all heard that before. But those people around him, you know, the, the Grahams, the Cruises, the Hollies, the Meadows, McCarthy, McConnell, all those guys, all older white men, which so happens to be, uh, they know he's an ass. They said it. I'm not saying that I think they think that. They've told us that ever since, you know, 2015, 16, all that kind of thing. I mean, you know, they've, they've called him... Uh, a xenophobic, a religious bigot, a racist, uh, unfit for office, on and on and on. Their words. But they're right there with him. Do they not know that they have children and grandchildren probably that are going to lose freedom if this guy is elected? I'm not talking about a policy. I'm talking about the idea of Kamala's a Kamala's opponent promised a lot of things last time to the black community that he did not deliver on. And we got to make sure we help black men understand that. So that's why I'm here to make sure I under help black men understand. First, get out and vote, and then vote for the next president of the United States, Kamala Harris. Yes, some sportsmen refuse to go to the White House. If Donald Trump would invite you to go to the White House. Sure. No, 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 it's fine. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. The police violence. I wouldn't go. Simple. You would not go? No. Why? Well, I mean, I think it's a whole um, uh, matter of respect and standing up for what you believe in. Now, you can agree or not disagree, and that's completely fine. I think that's the beauty of, of, uh, of the country is being able to speak up for what you believe in, right? So being able to voice that opinion, you can agree with it, you can disagree with it, um, but I'll certainly respect your opinion, and um, uh, I believe all thoughts should be valued. And so I, I, I wouldn't go. So in the US, I know you're not talking about somebody being lucid and cogent and enunciating their thoughts with clarity and you're bragging about Donald Trump. We can't be watching the same stuff oh, if I that's am. what you're doing. Oh, you ain't going to do that today. You know now, what? Lindsey Graham, hold it. Now, Senator yeah. Lindsey oh, Graham is about today. to come on this show. Let me tell you now, something. Now, that man can articulate himself sat very with well. Him. Not Donald Trump now. I have... Okay, I have sat with him for hour after hour after hour, topic after topic after topic, and he is so dialed in. Uh, I, 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 he, really? Look, you know, it's funny. People try. This is Can't like the latest press argument. And meanwhile, and me policing system was built against black people, you know, black and brown people, and that's the reason those reactions are different. That's the reason someone can walk or run or bust their way through or whatever into the Speaker of the House office and put their feet on the desk like they're sitting at home on their couch, storming, you know, storming into a building and, and busting out windows and carrying podiums and, and, and all that other stuff. That's not a protest. That's a terrorist attack. And so uh, stop using the, the, the like, stop 
describing those people the same way you describe someone who just stand there and make a chant and say, we want justice, we want peace. Stop using the same word. It's disrespectful. It's ridiculous. Um, and it's shameful, you know, to, to keep calling them protesters. Not protesters, they're terrorists. There was an idea that maybe it was better to say something to his face than, yeah. to, than to not go. But how has your thinking on the matter evolved sort of throughout the summer? Well, I mean, I think in general, um, the idea of going to the White House as part of the championship team is awesome. You know, it's an incredible honor. And, um, you honor the, the office, you honor the institution. I can speak from personal experience. Um, it doesn't matter. You set, it, you set aside political differences, right? So, I mean, I've had the pleasure to meet with Reagan, George Bush, Clinton, George W. Bush, Obama. Um, I didn't necessarily agree with all of them, but it was an incredible honor to be in their presence. Um, there was a respect for the office and also a respect not, not only from us, but from the president himself. Um, and that goes both ways. And I think uh, we would, in normal times, very easily be able to set aside political differences and go visit and have a great time and, and be awesome. These are not ordinary times. Um, probably the most device, divisive times in my life. Uh, I guess since Vietnam, but I was just a kid. I don't remember too much about Vietnam. Uh, because of the differences that exist in the country, uh, the president made it really, really difficult um, for us to yeah. honor that institution. And uh, our differences, I think, in terms of our team and our organization's values. Let's think about LeBron's comment on well, you know, I think everybody has the right to their own opinion. <laughs> I think LeBron voice is. I respect him voicing his opinion. You know, it's uh, it's a free country. Like, we called him a bum. I respect it. It's, uh, that's, that's how he feels. Maybe there's other people that feel like that. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> do you feel that way? I feel how I feel, you know. I, Michelle Obama said it best. She said it best, you know. They go high. They go low. We go high. So, he beat us to the punch. I'm happy the game is over. <laughs> just because it was me, you know, and then, then you stop and you think, well, this is just every day. This is just another day. So, I was the shiny object yesterday. There was another one today. There'll be a new one tomorrow, and the, the circus will go on. Um, so, it's just uh, strange, but, um, but it happened. Um, I did think about last night, I was thinking about my various um, visits to the White House. I've, I've uh, lived a privileged, privileged life and uh, met, I think, the, fast, the past five presidents uh, prior to President Trump. First one was in 1984, and Ronald Reagan was president. And uh, he invited my mom and me uh, six months after my dad was killed in a terrorist attack. And President Reagan and Vice President Bush invited us into the Oval Office spent about half an hour with us, thanking us for our, my dad's uh, service. He was in education, thanking us for my dad's commitment to uh, trying to share American values in the Middle East, trying to um, promote peace in the Middle East. And I just all I could think of last night was the contrast of what has happened in 35 years. And, uh, you know, there was, uh, a, a, there was no, didn't, there was no regard for, you know, whose side you were on politically, you know, political party, anything like that. It was just you were an American, and um, the, the office held such dignity and respect, um, both from the people who were visiting and uh, especially from the people who sat inside it. And um, it's just sad that it's come uh, crashing down and that we are now... Uh, living this, and I, and I realize the horse was out of the barn a long time ago on this, but for me personally, this was my experience with 
wow, as, uh, as the office sunk in low. And so my hope is that uh, we can find a, a mature unifier from either party to sit in that chair and try to uh, restore some dignity uh, to, to the overall well, I agree with that description if you remove the et from asset. On over now, we well, gotta get now, back to work. They, they won it again. <laughs> Well, right behind you over there is the trophy. Normally, when you win one of those things, you go to the White House to celebrate. Your coach has stood up there and said you guys are going to meet and discuss it as a team. Kevin Durant's been very open. He says, I don't want to go. What, what are your feelings on it? I'm, I'm on that same tip. And obviously, you don't want to rush to a decision on, on kind of understanding the magnitude of what this means. Um, we have an opportunity to send a statement um, that hopefully encourages unity, encourages uh, us to just appreciate what it means to be American um, and stand for something. So whether that's uh, whatever, whatever your opinion is on either side, that's where we want to we want to take this advantage so advantage of this opportunity. I just want to be so. very clear. You're saying you have the opportunity to say you're standing for something by not going. For me, yeah, that's that's my that's going to be my vote when I when we meet right. with the uh, with the team. Uh, but it is a collective. It's not just about me. It's not just about KD. It's about the whole team and what we are able to accomplish as a team and the opportunity that historically has been afforded to championship teams. So uh, we'll have that conversation, obviously, and we'll do it as a group and we'll have one voice. Um, but if you know, want to know uh, who, what I'm voting, I'm, yeah. I'm going to tell you that. I mean, look, there's other ways to celebrate with the country, so to speak. I think some of the Congress people from California have invited you guys to the Capitol building <laughs> in that same weekend that you guys will be in D.C. So that that's also tweet. What, what, what did you? Say? What was your first reaction when you, you saw what he tweeted? <laughs> I laugh because I've heard uh, that said in pickup games all the time, and that's a pretty, pretty strong. <laughs> strong statement and uh i think it's uh it's it's bold it's courageous for any guy to speak of uh, let alone a guy that has as much to, to lose as, as lebron does and, and other notable figures in the league so um like i said we all have to kind of stand as one the best we can um you know for me the question to, to lose as, as LeBron does and, and other notable figures in the league. So, um, like I said, we all have to kind of stand as one the best we can. Um, you know, for me, the questions have how things have gone on all summer with if I wanted to go to the White House or not. I told you yesterday, being very transparent, what my vote would have been in the meeting um, if had we had one. Um, and all based on just trying to to let people know I didn't want to you know be applauded for an accomplishment on, on the court when you know the guy that would be uh, doing the patting on the back is somebody that doesn't uh, I don't think respects the majority of Americans in, the, in this country so um, it's kind of what I stand for and, and hopefully that message rings loud. and yet you got in this conflict with the president he, he, the president of the United States tweeted about you how did that feel? It was surreal at the beginning um, for a lot of different reasons. I think going into that particular day, it was right before uh, our training camp started, and, and obviously there was a lot of talk about after we won the championship last year, if we go to the White House or not. Um, and, and us as a team, we had a process about how we come to that decision. Obviously, guys had different uh, you know, ideas or beliefs, and, and we're going to have a meeting that day to talk about it as a group because it's not, it's, not, it's not just about Stephen Curry going to the White House or the Warriors going and we wanted to have, make that decision as a group because we won the championship as a group um, and we know what the honor is of going you know, to the White House and so before we even had an opportunity obviously I voiced you know, my, my side of, of the argument. I don't think I should, I don't, I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> He kind of, you know, took that power away from us and, and and didn't allow us to have that process to come to a decision as a group. And that's the president. Um, after you suggested that you might not want to go, yeah, he because withdrew the he in, said, he invitation. Said, wait, invitation withdrawn <laughs> on a tweet. Yeah, um, and obviously, I think that was a rallying point, not just for our team, but for the entire NBA and for the the sports world in general. I think um, there was so much support from all type of NBA players, from fans. Um, yeah. You know kind of just backing us and, and, and understanding that, yes, going to the White House is definitely a huge honor. We've been before when, when President Obama was there, but, um, you know, if it, it's more, if you're, if you're not going to celebrate, you know, 
the collective and you know the majority of Americans that, that live in this country and that watch us play and the fact that sports rallies you know all these different types of people these different types of backgrounds together to celebrate a game and that's why we're going to the White House to celebrate that accomplishment then I, I didn't want to go um, and I think we could definitely use our time better when we go to uh, to DC um, you know, during the season so you're going you're going to DC not going to the White House what are you going to do when you get to DC uh, we're going to reach out to the youth there in the community. Steph Curry and not talk about a three-point shot, but a shot he took at the president. Under Armour CEO Kevin Plank recently called President Trump an asset to the United States. Well, via the Mercury News, Steph Curry said, quote, I agree with that description if you remove the et from asset. Quote, My goodness, well, Steph Curry is a cloud athlete. Plank was one of several CEOs with whom Trump met to explore business growth opportunities. So Curry said that he wanted clarification on where Under Armour stands on certain social issues. And he also said that their views don't differ from his own. So their relationship has not been affected. Now, John, you were a mensch. You got two. Very sad. Um, just time in general, all the conversations around the election and our the state of politics in our country, and then you have a situation like this, which just evokes a lot of emotions around things that we need to correct as a people, like obviously gun control first and foremost, because the fact that that's even possible for somebody to kind of, you know, have an attack like that, but just more so you just, you want to, positivity and hope like that it sounds cheesy but it's real like that's when our country's at its best it's such a demoralizing day for our country and um it's um you know yet another example of uh, not only our political division but also our uh, gun culture you know 20 year old with an ar-15 you know trying to shoot the former president it's hard to process everything, and, it, and, it's, and it's scary to think about where this... Thanks for tuning in. I just watched this compelling video featuring some NBA legends discussing their thoughts on Donald Trump. Their passion and concern really stood out to me, and I wanted to take a moment to react. First off, I completely understand where they're coming from. The issues they raised about Trump's leadership during his presidency resonate with a lot of people. They spoke about the impact of his policies and rhetoric. And it's clear that they care deeply about the consequences those decisions have on our communities. As athletes and role models, their voices carry significant weight, and it's great to see them engage in such important conversations. That said, we also need to recognize the diversity of political views out there. While many share the concerns that the legends expressed, there are also those who feel that Trump represents a necessary change in our political landscape. For some, he's a voice for those who feel unheard, and it's essential to acknowledge that perspective, even if we don't agree with it. Basketball teaches us about teamwork and collaboration, and I think that's a valuable lesson for our political discourse. We may not always see eye to eye, but we can engage in respectful dialogue. The upcoming election is a critical opportunity for us to have these discussions openly and to really listen to each other. I want to encourage all of you to think critically about what you believe. Don't shy away from conversations with those who might have different viewpoints. It's through these discussions that we can foster understanding and find common ground. As fans and citizens, we have a responsibility to stay informed and engaged. Whether it's through sharing our thoughts on social media or having conversations in our communities, every voice matters. Let's create a space for dialogue that uplifts our communities rather than divides them.